we're live on Facebook. Okay. So, but I'm I'm gonna share I'm gonna share the page and and uh, and then we'll get cranked up for uh, yeah, like audio sides rolling over there. Okay, good. Boom. Boom. All right. Paul, you can, if you want. What's up, everybody? You. Alan Dar. What's up, man? All right. Hit the share. Okay. Pull that up too. You want to share it to the Calandras page? Sure. So you go to the, go to ESPN. All right. Well, I don't know if you know where it is. Just go to the 1045 ESPN page and just share it to Calandras. I'm a millennial, Matt. Well, I didn't know if you knew what page we were originating from. That's why I, <laughs> that's why I felt like explaining, jerk face, whatever. <laughs> Man, mansplaining, whatever jerk face. Actually, you might be right. I might not know how to do this. Mm -hmm. See, <laughs> jerk face. So go to the search, type in 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge, go to the live video, and then hit it share from the from the thing. Yeah, jerk face. Mm-hmm. See, now I hear it over there. Yeah, I hear it. All right. You got it? <laughs> I got it. All right, Paul, are you ready? Carly Cat, what's up, dude? Appreciate everybody watching. Let's see, Crank video. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm hit we got an open now, by the way. <laughs> Do we? I made this. Thanks to Abby, Abby Lee for the voice. All right, here we go. In three, two. Ready, Paul? Okay. They're the gang with the slang. This is Bourbon Dictionary with Matt Moscona and Taylor Calandro. All right, peeps, let's do it. Sweet. How about it, man? Nice. It's little official. November, little uh, cool weather. You better believe it's whiskey season. Oh. My God. We're a month away from the Calandro's Rare Whiskey Raffle. Still wearing short sleeves in studio, though. It's going to be chilly tomorrow. It got to like 80 this week. I know. <laughs> it's so stupid. I think there's a cold front coming through Let's tomorrow. hope so. I'm Matt. He's Taylor we appreciate you for joining us here on Bourbon Dictionary, trying to make this a more regular thing. Once we get through football season, and for you, whiskey season, I'm sure we'll make this uh, a, a more regular thing. But uh, what I wanted to do today was talk about what has become, prob not probably, the fair to say the biggest whiskey event in our city, the Calandro's Rare Whiskey Raffle every December. And then also, Taylor and I are going to talk a little bit about what we are hoping uh, comes under our Christmas tree this year, and also a what you got sitting right there, a bottle of uh, what you all went and hand selected in Vermont at yep. Whistle Pick. So all that here on the uh, on the episode. Let's start. I want to start with the raffle though. Um, give me the all right. Assume people listening have zero clue, never heard of it at all. Tell us the genesis of the uh, the Calandros Rare Whiskey Raffle. Started eight years ago um, by. CJ, actually, um, CJ Weber, our old liquor manager who is now at um, a Therns on campus. Old Red, uh, Redhead. Yeah. Um, him and my dad had the idea of doing it. I, I think it had been being done in other states, um, but we hadn't heard of anything in Louisiana. So uh, they started doing it. It was, I mean, we had. What was the idea behind it, though? I mean, so just to, so explain. So this time of year, you get your allocations in of the rare yeah. stuff, and you what? So you have customers come in asking, yes. and then you just don't like. How do you fairly? And I, I want you to speak to this, being in your role. You've got so many regulars, yes. and this time of year, everybody wants the rare stuff that's coming out. It's kind sure. of where you you polish off your collection. Right. But how do you fairly disseminate it? Well, so there's two ways. One is a raffle. I think. I think there's two ways. We've put a lot of thought into this. The first way is a raffle. Just give everybody a shot. Okay. Second way would be a loyalty program. I know a lot of bigger stores in big cities do loyalty programs. So you get points for every dollar you spend in the store. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes towards a list, basically. And when a rare allocation comes in of anything throughout the year, you are put on a list, and it's it's like the TAF. I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's like just TAF points. Um, 
So you put on a list, and they'll go down that list. They'll give you a call, say, "Hey, you are, are you interested in this?" If, if the person in front of you is not, they'll call the next person next uh, over and over. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how they work, and I'm sure every store does it a little differently. But um, so, but that's a lot of uh, legwork and paperwork and keeping up with stuff throughout the year. So, and the raffles just become a fun thing for us anyway. We it's more than a raffle. We do a free tasting, um, and and now we we've. Uh, added the charity aspect into it so which is probably the cool part for those that don't know and if you're in the greater baton rouge area this year's uh calandro's rare whiskey raffle is thursday december the 12th five to eight the raffle starts at seven but people will start getting there early and so you'll have vendors set up and a lot of different tastings for whiskey and for wine and man how, what was the head count last year uh, it had to be it was close to 500 it was right around 500 all right so so all of those people crammed into the store, the Calandros there on Perkins. And the idea is you buy your raffle tickets, yep. which go into the hopper. As they draw, you're know, going down the list of the allocation. They pull your ticket. You have the option to buy it or pass. Yep. So, uh, But what's been cool is the money that you all have raised. For tickets. On the ticket sales. 100%. 100% of it goes to... A uh, charity that we pick every year. This so year's for kids. Last year was Folds of Honor. Folds of Honor. Raised over 30, 30 grand. 37000 $37,000. I mean, so, so like, think about that. One day, one event, just people coming to drink whiskey, you raised $37,000 for great charity. This year, it's Four Kids Foundation, which Four Kids disseminates funds to Louisiana children's charities all over the state. It's, yes. a, great, it's a great organization. Four Kids actually organizes the Zurich Classic, the PGA Tournament in New Orleans. Yes, I mean it's it's a golf based charity. It's really um, it's owned not owned, but the PGA really has a big thing to do with it. Um, but they do way more than than golf charities. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really big in New Orleans. They're trying to grow the Baton Rouge chapter. So, and me and my dad are big golfers. So, yeah. What um, what for the raffle would be sort of the next step, the next phase of it? Have y'all thought like? La I mean, Taylor, I was there last year, man, and it's like you walk into the Calandro's grocery store and it's people yeah. crammed in the lobby and then like down every aisle lining. It's just, I, I don't know that you can fit much more, many more people. So as this thing continues to grow, what do you do next? I don't know. That's not a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. Um, we like people coming in the store. Um, we don't want to move it do anywhere. you cap it? No. Why? I, I don't know. I, I mean, are are you uncomfortable rubbing shoulders with people? Not at all, but I think it's also <laughs> realistic to to acknowledge that at some point. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, if if it gets much bigger than it is now, we're gonna have to do something. I mean, as far as a cap or something. But um, it, I've told you my idea. My idea is is parking lot, and I know there's permits and all different types of things involved. But landlords too. Landlords, I get that. Insurance man, and lawyers. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But man, you have a big. If you have a gigantic like under the big top parking lot event that was sto flow, store flow, big top and and store and food trucks and everything, spotlights, live music. Then you're talking about <laughs> instead of 30 grand, you're raising 100 grand in a night. Man. And now you got a big old thing that people look forward to every year, I, not just the whiskey community. I wish we could do something like that. Actually, we're doing something like that at uh, Government Street tonight for White Light Night. White Light Night, yeah. Um, and my cousin uh, Trey throws a big shindig over there. I don't really have much to do with it, but uh, I mean, I'll I'll stop by, but I don't have much to do with it anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's getting big. Uh, is it getting out of control? Maybe. Nah, it's great now. Uh, I, I, you I, feel like you're at an event. Ah, yes. I think right now we're at a good number, and hopefully, I mean, we'll see how the turnout is in a few weeks. But um, it's growing a little bit every year. I think we've kind of plateaued a little bit with the number. I just, I mean. It's so many people. Tell me. Uh, so anyway, again, if you're in the Baton Rouge area, you know someone who is. Make plans to be there. I always say, like, if you want to learn about whiskey, it's great. How many vendors did, or, do you plan to have? It, it, I mean, it, it varies. Ball, ballpark. Uh, 50, 30. Tw okay, I was going to say 15, 20. So 30 different vendors. Four and multiple things. Yeah. So, like, I know last year, I remember just for one, for example, Pinhook was there. Mm -hmm. And they probably had five or six different bottles. So if you wanted to go sample five or different five or six different pin hook offerings, yep. you could do that, right? So, I mean, no matter what, and yet... And, and we'll have that this year, actually. Wine, you had wine, wine vendors as well. It'll so be, It's going to be a lot, most of a, a ton of whiskey. Um, all of our single barrels will be poured. You'll be there. I will be there. Doing Look, your show. Looking forward to that. It's very rare that AFR goes on the road since we've been in the TV yeah. studio because of our CST partnership. It, 
to to break that commitment is a very big deal. Yeah. And to my knowledge, we, I think there's been one show since we started on CST that we haven't done for was TV. It, it was Media Days? No, because we bring a TV setup and do a, a TV show from Media Days on Radio Row. So we have that setup and that capability to do that. It was We did a show this year with the Tiger Athletic Foundation, the Coaches Caravan from Nashville for the LSU Vanderbilt game. They had a uh, the Friday before, so we did our we did AFR from uh, the Redneck Riviera, the um yeah the, the bar there on mm-hmm. on Broadway, and it was amazing. And I, now I wish we ha- we had TV there because that's you know a, that was an incredible sight to behold with the crowd and just the way the energy was in the room. I, I wish we were doing TV for this one, but um because I because similarly I think it's going to be an awesome sight. But either way, it's uh, it would be a great I show. I think TV's happening. Okay, well, if that's true, then I mean, that's, I, I, that's news I, to me. I had but a I'm meeting down. about it last week, so I'm I'm pretty sure. And 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 they want to do it up too. They want to put cameras everywhere to, Good. to capture the whole scope of the event. So. I'm down with that. Uh, Nathan Norman's watching on Facebook. Said he'll be there. We look forward to seeing there. Hey, seeing Nate, you there. Um, Nate's one of my good customers. He had, uh, I want to talk. So make plans to be at the Calandros Rare Whiskey Raffle on December the twelfth. Five to eight. Uh, all the proceeds benefit the Four Kids Foundation. Who knows? Maybe you get a chance to buy some Pappy or something great, which we'll talk about some of the other great stuff as well in a second. But talk to me about what you have here on the set. You know I'm a gigantic Whistlepick fan. We've talked about that. Uh, this this just came in today? Uh, 30 minutes ago. Like Walked literally, the door. you were leaving the <laughs> I store. I was waiting for it to come. I knew it was coming in today, and um, I just wasn't sure if it was going to be here before I before I had to come over here and do this, but it literally came in right before. So so walk us through it. What is it? So this is Whistle Pig. It says 10 on the label. It's not 10. It's a 13-year. Um, it's Alberta juice, which people ask if it's an MGP or Alberta. So it's sourced from Alberta. Um, it's named Natty Babe after my sister, uh, Natalie. She was with us on the trip, me and my dad. We went to Vermont to Shoreham and uh, stayed at Whistle Pig and – Picked a barrel while we were there. They took care of us, man. It was an awesome experience in the middle of nowhere of Vermont. Uh, little bed and breakfast on property that they, they own. Uh, they have a chef in house, takes care of you the whole time, cook all the meals for you. Um, but, yeah, we picked out of a, of a lineup of about six barrels, and this was the obvious winner. And uh, what, what was it about this barrel that you liked so much? I don't know. I, I tried. Uh, I, try, I, I actually remember tasting this barrel. It, it was uh, this was just such a good barrel for for me. I I, I don't remember a lot of them because we just we, we taste all day every day. Um, I tried a few and I got to this one and I was like, oh my god, this is it. that was it, huh? Well, you've this got it, it poured here. Yes. And, and the benefit of uh, you have yours as well. Yep. All right. Cheers. Already drank most the, uh, of mine. the the benefit of having a guy like uh like Jay Decody in our building now is he has you know sippers on on the second Jay's floor. Jay's going to want to so. drink every now and then so but yeah so um it's 13 year uh I think it came out phenomenally the guy that was there at Whistle Pig didn't want to get rid of this barrel is what he told us and I believed him too. <laughs> what differentiated I I I don't know man it was just it was one of those those barrels that I tried I'm like this is it I know it like this is it. So, What's the proof on it? Uh, 122. Yeah, it's got a big punch, like a big punch right there on the palate. Um, but, man, it, it's got a lot of spice. The finish is really nice, though. I mean, it is a nice, long finish on it. That was my first sip. It's good. I love like it, it, man. Wow. And and I'm usually – so here's – I typically – we've talked about this before. I like something that's a little lower proof. Something that's in the 100 to 110 range is probably about, like, my my mm-hmm. my max – once you get into the one twenties, and I, I, I'm not really a foolproof guy. Yeah, um, you've told me. I, that. I just, I don't, I don't enjoy. It's, I would, my comp to someone who knows nothing about whiskey. It's like hot wings. Yeah, I can go medium if medium's not going to bring tears to I'm my the, eyes. I'm the but, same way. But people that want hot wings and want that like that fire, I don't want that. Yeah, no. So I, I, I want something with a really nice, smooth finish. And this, this punches on the palate initially, but. But I think the finish is very nice, which which is probably the thing that I love most about all of the whistle pig stuff. I mean, I, I've that that's my jam. I mean, we've talked about it yeah. enough. But man, this they they never disappoint. So 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 this this was made in Canada, um, and Canada is known for its rye. I mean, they grow really good rye. They make really good rye, um, and it, there's I mean, 
you can get good rye in America too, um, but most of the good grain is sourced from Canada. It's just the colder temperatures, I think, is more uh, conducive to, to growing good rye and um, rye for whiskey. Um, it, it, rye typically is very spicy, mm-hmm. like like you said. Um, Whistle Pig has somehow found a way to mellow that out. Yeah. It's still got a spice kick to yeah. it, but it's not like crazy, like you said. I mean, um, it's got a really good like bourbon finish, like a little it does. brown sugar, it ha- yeah. There's like caramel, vanilla situation going on in there. The caramel is always noticeable, I think, in in Whistle Pig, um, and something else I want to talk about too. So, do you think of the? This is your third uh, Whistle Pig barrel pick. This or is, is this our four? fifth. This is your fifth? Okay, this is uh, our fourth this year. <laughs> Fourth, okay, that's what I was counting. We did one last year, and this I think we did one last year. Maybe no, one last year, four this year. Last year was a, was a thirteen year also. No, la- damn it. Yeah, I, it's they're hard. all jumbled in my brain. I think one did. We, we we did one two years ago, and it was a ten year. I think the first one this year was a thirteen year. Okay, that's the one you're thinking of. Yeah, the one that it blew out of there. Um, it was a huge hit. Yeah, and then you had the the ten and the twelve year. Yes. The ten the year, and babe, yes, and, and the, uh, um, the bespoken barrel. The bespoken, yep. Yes. Okay, so those uh, are the, the three. Th- those are the three that I was thinking of. So you had one last year, which I didn't try, and then this would be number five that y'all have done. Yes. So how do you like this one relative to the others? And and, and by the way, if you're listening or watching, the previous episode that Taylor and I did was all about barrel picks and the process. Yeah. So if you're if you hear us say that and you want to learn more about that, a lot of you probably know that, but if you want to learn more about that process. Go go listen to Bourbon Dictionary episode two, which we did last month. Yep, um, or watch. This is comparable to the first one we did this year. I think I'm uh, I'm gonna have to go back and revisit it. The uh, the Babe one. I think you have a bottle too. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and revisit, and and you can have this bottle too. Hey, <laughs> my lucky day. That well, that uh, would be for well. You know what I what I do enjoy doing. I did this the last time too. Is I did I did the side by side taste test of all of them and. Um, the Franken Babe for me, I thought was was incredible. I, I actually, yeah. I was surprised. I surprised myself that I enjoyed that more than the Bespoken, because if you give me just the the traditional, the the ten year and the 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 uh, twelve year Whistle Pig, I'm gonna go with with the twelve. Yeah. Um, but I was surprised that I, I liked your your ten year barrel pick. Yeah, I mean, but the, it's kind of apples and oranges because ten years just straight rye. Uh, the twelve year they finish it in different wine casks. It's a so, cast finish. Yeah. Um, but also, if I remember correctly, but this is thirteen what, year straight rye. If so. I remember correctly, also the way that the ten year when when you do a barrel pick, you can kind of choose the the. Uh, yes, the blend. Wait, wait. wait what they you, they give you the percent the percentage of the blend that you can add. On, where, where on the, the spoken barrel? That was the one where you could choose. Yes. Okay. So the Bespoken Barrel, they've got a 12-year regular Old World that is their standard right. wine barrel. They, they came up with a recipe that they like, and they stick to it. Now, when you choose a Bespoken Barrel, you get to do the different mix yeah, yeah, and see it. what you got like. It, got so. it. They're all available. Someone just asked, uh, Eric Hart asked if this is available at both Calandros. This, uh, it's available at Perkins today. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to get it out at Government Street today. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm going over there after this, actually. So, um it will be available definitely at Government Street next week, but it's it, it's probably available at Perkins right now. They they were working on putting stickers on when I left. So Brandon asked, when is the r- raffle list going to be out? Whenever I get my allocation of the antiques. So it, I, I've I've got a list of uh, I, I I can give you a rough list of a yeah. couple of things that I have right now. I've got a uh, Parker's Heritage, Elmer T. Lee. Um, How many bottles of Elmer T. Lee? Four bottles of Elmer T. Lee, I think. Uh, Is that Farm. your allocation for the whole year? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Christmas wish list and two that's, that's two <laughs> two birthday I'm bourbons. Low. Two you got old, two birthday bourbons. Yeah, I got two birthday bourbons. It's it's been one or two every year for the last few years. Uh, a bunch of Elijah Craig eighteen, uh, which is amazing. I tried that yeah. last year. Your dad got your dad got really generous last year uh, at the raffle and started popping open bottles and I was he like, does that i was like i'm just gonna stand while, while mark is is this general, i'm just gonna stand right here at this table with my cup like this and he, i'm not he, moving he, he he's a lightweight he'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll he's, he, he's he's a heavyweight lightweight he, he he gets a couple sips of whiskey into him and not, you, you don't know what's gonna happen so. uh well the last year was a lot it's always a lot of fun yeah. oh so what else do you have do you, that you know of offhand well or 12 um 
some Michter's toasted finish, um, nice. bourbon and rye, which is outstanding. Four Roses Small Batch Limited Edition. Um, How many bottles? Two. Okay. Which this year has 23-year-old, I think, in it. I lucked into a bottle of Four Roses Limited last year, mm-hmm. um, and I saw it on a secondary market website I was looking at, and I've already opened it, but someone was trying to sell it for five ninety nine a bottle mm-hmm. on the secondary market. You bought I was it? Like, no, I was I was given it last year. Oh, you were given one. I, I was okay. given one last year. I've already opened it. I've I've I mean it's a third finished. It's amazing. Mm. Um but it's one of those things where you look and you go, Should I have just left it sealed and try to sell it? <laughs> I mean that that would pay for that would pay for everything I drink for the rest of the year. I've uh, I've got a few bottles open like that where yeah. I'm like yeah, should I have? Was yeah. it worth it? Yeah, it's really good, but was it really worth it? And and the bottom line is, truthfully, and this is my opinion. I don't know if you share it, but nothing is actually worth it. Like nothing. No. No, like you can drink, and you know, we. I think we probably talked about this in our first episode. You can go buy a thirty dollar bottle of Elijah Craig Small Batch and be happy as a pig in slop. The world whiskey you know of I mean? the year this year, Henry McKenna ten year. McKenna, perfect is. 30 bucks if you can find it if you can find it now finding it um it which will we, we should have some available for sale at the raffle this year um we, we've been accumulating a little bit yeah so. you but that's a 30 dollar whiskey our whiskey of the year this year. i remember about two years ago i was talking to to your dad to mark at the store and he put me onto that i was like yeah, i'm just looking for something new he goes have you tried this it was the mckenna 10 i was like no i haven't he's like grab a bottle i said that he said like in a year that's going to be 60 bucks a bottle yeah it, it was already and, and it's it's like uh, and you can and now, like you said, it's one World Whiskey of the Year, and it's and it, it's now it's so hard to find because the the word's out on it. Before it won World Whiskey of the Year, it was already yes. getting a little steam uh, ahead of itself, and uh, it uh it was getting harder to. get. This is incredible, by the way. Awesome. I'm glad you like oh it. I mean, it, it's it, it's as good as I remember tasting it. The at more the, the, the more it keeps opening up too. Yeah. That that um that flash on the palate d- dissipates as well, and yeah. you're just tasting more of. Like you talked about the vanilla and the caramel notes on the yeah, and, the, and oh, this good. since that's it's a, oh, it's an older good. barrel, it's it 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 was a lower yield, so we only got 132 bottles. So I don't know if it's gonna last long or not. See, we, we we've been bad on predictions of barrels that last long and ones that don't. So, but anyway, I wouldn't wait to get this one. Yeah, um, it's Natty Babe. It's uh, at the Calandros in Baton Rouge. If you're in Baton Rouge, go check it out. If you're not in Baton Rouge, drive to Baton Rouge and go get it at either location. You should, even if you live like a lot of people live all over, you know, they watch us or listen to us all over the place. You should just fly here to buy that. Yeah, you should fly. Do you here ship? To buy them. Do y'all ship? Or you no. can't ship? You can't ship. Not legally. legally. Yeah. Um, operative word. Operative word. Legally. Legally. Not um, le- legally. All right. You asked me before we came in here. Actually, you texted. We texted last night. Like. What would be on your holiday wish list? Like, yeah. what would you like to open up? I, I have my my list, but I have very expensive taste. So were you thinking, uh, like, everyday buys or? What do you want? Uh, no, well, you go first. I got. I was going to make a list, and I got tied up this morning. Okay, with whiskey people. The top, so. the top thing on my list is something that I that you've had at at the Perkins store forever, and there's a bottle sitting there calling me, and I can't believe I haven't bought it yet. I'm stupid because uh, I should have just at some point taken it. It's the Kentucky Owl 11 Year Rye, which as much of a rye guy as I, you also have the bottle. Yeah. Okay, I'm probably just going to come by it. Um, I as much of a rye guy as it. Come in, Jay Dakota's here. Come on, sit there. Well, we don't have a mic for. You. Um, that's a problem. Hey, Jay Dakota. Hey, Jay. Uh, yeah, it's good. Well, we don't, we don't have a mic, but okay. Well, Jay's here. Hey, uh, guys. Hey, Jay. Me and Jay are friends. Jay, we, uh, we took we'll the, the, the good thing about having Jay, uh, in, in our building is that we were able to just go to the second floor and take, take your, your, your sipping glasses. So I was, I was watching yeah, on the TV own. outside and I was like, are those my rocks glasses? You, you have to get closer. <laughs> these, these mics, you gotta get, you gotta get like right on the mic. Um, right on. There you go. Um, so we're talking about what whiskeys that we'd like for, like uh, wish wish list whiskeys, right? So for me, uh, the Kentucky Owl 11 Year Rye. Two summers ago, my cousin was in South Carolina. He saw a bottle of it, called me. He's like, "Do you want it?" I was like, "Yes." Of what? Of the the Kentucky, Kentucky Owl 11 Year Rye. Um, it, it as a rye guy, that is still to me the best rye I've ever had. It's. Did you try batch one or was was it batch three? I need to go look at the label again. Batch one Actually, I threw is it away. outstanding. It was this would have been the summer of 
18. That was that was probably batch two. It was it was the best thing, the best ride I've had. They, um, they, they've all been good. It was an amazing combination of sweet, almost like you were drinking syrup. It was it just phenomenal. So I've looked at that bottle at Calandra's, and I'm like, just buy it today. Just like, yeah, I'll go out to dinner with my wife and spend 200 bucks. It's like, just buy it. What are you? Why are you just looking at it? Why am I? Why are you? Like, why are you overthinking this? Uh, so I'll probably just go buy that for myself. Um, last year, my dad kind of hit a home run. Uh, and my dad's not a whiskey guy. He doesn't really know. But he he's sort of learned the things that I like, right? And I open up a box. And I, obviously, I know, it's, I know it's brown water. But I'm thinking, ah, he probably went and got me. He, he knows I like Whistle Pig. He knows I like you know, Four Roses Single Barrel. You know, he probably went and bought me some of my, my staples, my everydays. And I open it up. And it's a bottle of Weller Antique and Blanton's. Dorignac's barrel picks from New Orleans. He just happened to be in New Orleans and he was looking around for something. And they, I guess their liquor manager was, Butch, you know, was Butch, like, probably. Yeah, I, I don't know who it was, but was like, what do you, can I help? He's like, yeah, my son likes this stuff. And I think he likes, I think I probably know I like Weller 12, which is my total jam. But he's like, oh, well, he'll like this. And he gave him both of the barrel picks. Yeah. Uh, didn't give it to him, he sold it to him. So anyway, so my dad unknowingly stumbled onto an awesome. Uh, Christmas present. So that's a pretty sweet score. That's an amazing score, and he set his bar really high. Yeah, because that's probably what they'll do again for me this year. It's kind of just what I well, asked he, for. He needs to come see me. Well, okay, I'll tell him to go see you then, and then, <laughs> well, then you give him. That's fine. Um, did, have you thought of any more? Of any more what? That would be under your. Uh, I, wish I, list? I was more doing that for you because okay. uh, my like my wish list. I. All you have to do is walk in your dad's office. I have access. To yeah, you have access. What about you, Jay? Literally everything. So one of my favorite bourbons of all time uh, was the Jefferson Presidential Select 17. Okay. Oh, yeah. And if I found another bottle of that, that's that's on my wish list. That's a whiskey that I want to drink again. Mm -hmm. I didn't think the 18 or the the 21 that came out after it were as good as the the Presidential Select 17. What was the difference? Just uh, what year it came out? When when? No, I'm sorry. On, like for you the, tasting it, taste wise. Was, yeah, yeah. Um, the the 17 just had it. It was just the right balance of smoothness, and but but kind of robust flavor and character. It was so oaky, so vanilla y, um, and it was it was by far the best stuff that I've had from Jefferson. Yeah. And I've got the President's Select 21 on the shelf at my house still, and I, I I'm savoring You're it. Not gonna... But but have, I, have you opened I it or not? It's it's open. It, it's open. But, okay, but I, I haven't finished. I, I don't just pour I, it. I, I need to try that next time. The twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. Always for sure. We get, 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 yeah. Oh, you're you're welcome to try it. Sorry. Can, can we can we just Joseph? Would you mind just setting up a, a, another? Mic? Thank you, jo <laughs> jo <laughs> thank, thank, <laughs> Joseph Rodriguez, who's the guy who's basically Joseph's job basically is run the video studio. Joseph runs everything here, uh, in this room. So. Uh, thank you very much, Joseph. All right, all right Jay. There, there you go, Jay. Jay, get a get, Jay, get a chair, please, if you would, just for just for the just for the sake of the shot, please. Just get a chair. All right. This, I, I'm not going to say it's entirely gone off the rails. I think Joseph probably just saved it. It was a it was a brief detour. Joe, Joe, that was a brief detour off of the interstate to avoid the three car pileup, and by doing the five minute uh, detour there off the interstate. He just saved us an hour of traffic. So thank you, Joseph. I appreciate I that. I love chaos, so it doesn't matter. It's all good. Thank you. There you go. Hey, my uh, pleasure, guys. The um we were talking about uh like the is there so you mentioned your Jefferson's presidential twenty one. Is there another bottle that you have open that you haven't um that, that like you've opened it, but that's maybe like one pour or two? Pappy fifteen. Yeah. It it's open, but I haven't That's my favorite I, I won't Pappy. finish it. Um, is it worth going high? Because I've had the Pappy 15, and it's incredible. I think Pappy Should, 15 is the sweet spot. Okay, so when you get to the 20 and the 23, it's a little maybe too uh, oaky is too old. They're, they're good, and, and, and for older bourbons, they're probably the best of the older bourbons um, that I've tried. I just think liquid in a barrel for that long is going to, if it's not scotch, is going to start being overpowered by the wood and everything. So Yeah. But 15 is definitely... My favorite, Pappy. I'm just pissed off at Jay because I always open stuff on his show, <laughs> and he's got he's got Jefferson Presidential 21 sitting there. I, I didn't know he had that, and he's never you gotta, have it before. You need to come back over to the house. 
do, do another yeah. uh, ABV podcast with Chuck P at the house. And there the it house is. is legit. Make it happen. Um, how's the new Whistle Pig 18? I tried it at Whistle Pig. Um, it was fantastic. I I've got a few bottles. I haven't opened. We, we didn't open one, so I don't know. Are y'all? Is it is it part of the raffle? At Calandra's or is it shelf? We're we're debating on what to do with okay. it. Okay, so uh, I think it's going to end up on the shelf just because it's so pricey. So, um, what's the retail on it? Three fifty ish. Three fifty ish. Like so, that's what we were talking. I don't know what you're feeling on this, Jay. Like when you walked in, we were having the conversation. Like, is anything really worth it? Like worth the price, right? Um, you know, it, when you get to a certain benchmark, because what we were saying was you can. We were talking about McKenna, right? McKenna. Is thirty bucks thereabouts whis- it's whiskey? The re- it's amazing. Yeah, it, like good luck finding it now. But you can find things for thirty, forty, fifty bucks that are amazing and will keep you perfectly happy. Like, is anything really worth spending that much money? And I guess the way that I always approach it is, what about like uh, an outdoorsman who has a safe of t- twenty hunting rifles that they've spent tens of thousands of dollars? <laughs> sure. Like, do you need? Enough ammo to fight a small war <laughs> in your closet? Probably right. not. Do I You're need? Them, do I need my five hundred dollar? You know, the the Whistle Pig Fourth Edition Black Prince? No, I don't need that. But you know what? Screw you and your and all your guns. You know, <laughs> screw you and your and your twenty thousand dollar boat and your hunting license and all. You know what I mean? It's like I just say to each their own. If you find something that's your hobby, or or how about this? You and the the twenty thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand you spend on. Eight season tickets to LSU football in your tradition fund, right? Yep. I mean, it's like, what do you spend your disposable income on? Yeah, that's what it is, and it, and it's what brings you joy and happiness, what you get utility out of. And by all means, if you get it out of whiskey in that way and mm-hmm. to that level, and this is amazing, and to having that sort of collection, because you're right, I, people collect way crazier stuff than super high end whiskeys that you actually can enjoy. My office is getting absurd. I've got I think 150 bottles in my office now. Brilliant. It's and last year for Christmas my in-laws bought me a whiskey cabinet and I filled it and it kind of it tidied up the room and now it's overflowed again. So it's like do I just keep another getting, whiskey cabinet? Do, right, do I just get a bigger cabinet? Do I keep getting where then where do I put all these or cabinets? Or some sort of there, some there, sort of open shelving so you can just have it all on display. There's no right I had that in my office right, but I, right, right or wrong thing about collecting whiskey i mean it's just it's a hobby if, if you open it and drink it and enjoy it who cares what people think amen i tell everybody i mean who cares um so the other ones that i had i had mentioned uh that i had written down were mckenna elmer Tilly, and weller 12 if 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 i was thinking about this when you asked me the question those are all affordable you say those yeah. aren't affordable No, those are those are those are but, all but, very, but they're but very again, hard to but get where, how do you find them right yes. so that's the tough part so affordable for me but hard to get. if you said matt you could have one thing for the rest of your life like we're gonna lock you in a room with one whiskey for the rest of your life and it's the only thing you can drink forever i'm gonna Ooh. take i'm taking weller 12 like okay. that's that's it that's my thing what about you Jeff? a nice weeded bourbon there that, you go the, weller 12 for me has been totally my sweet spot that's, and i would drink that that's forever. A good, good that's a good topic what, what what would you be locked in a room with for the rest of your life Jefferson Presidential Select Seventeen. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. You know, that's that's my favorite bourbon I've ever had. I mean, I I would rather have a. I was gonna say I'd rather have a bottle of that than a than a bottle of Pappy Fifteen. Okay. I, I might would. I, I don't. I've never tasted them side by side. I don't have any mm-hmm. more Presidential Select Seventeen. Could taste the Twenty One side by side with the Pappy Fifteen. But I don't. It sounds it, like you're just bragging now. What a jerk. You're the one with a hundred fifty Jay, bottles. Jay, over Jay's there. got special privileges everywhere. But, but so. a, a lot of, but <laughs> Thanks, you know Taylor. what's you know what's happened though, <laughs> a lot of what I have has ended up being gifted to me. Like this is this is Same. A, so Same. I'm I'm sure like this is so earlier this week or last week, funny thing happened. A guy who listens to 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 the show, uh, he's watching he's watching my morning scone Facebook live. He goes, hey man, if you give my son, he lives in Florida. He goes, my son's travel ball team they're playing for a championship it's like if you give him a shout out on the show with terrio i'll send you some whiskey i'm like oh man i'll, I'll shout out your kid he listens to the show i'm like he the kid will love it i'm like no problem he's like no no i want to send you okay he sends me a package with four bottles of different whiskeys so it's like i, I mean i'm the only person in my house yeah. that's ever going to drink any the of collection grows right so it's like <laughs> well don't 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 so i'll just sip it and then, well you know. whiskey doesn't go bad i know it's not like I'm it not, goes bad i'm not apologizing you for it, mean but, you but can get pre-prohibition whiskey on the internet that is crystal clear and perfectly fine to drink how much so, does that cost a lot how much <laughs> just depends on what it is 
I mean, there's different ones. There's pre-prohibition. I mean, there's prescription bottles of whiskey that you can find on the internet with that are sealed and everything that can go for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, Clint Caballero, did Louisiana ever get four rows of small batch select? Yeah, we did. All right. I have two bottles in the raffle. Hey, there it is. Um, all right. If y'all want to get questions on Facebook, you can fire away. Um, uh, Kevin said, Matt, I'm going to get you a whistle pig Christmas gift. That would be great. Kevin Carrier. Carrier. C-A-R-I-E-R-E. Carrier. Carrier. You're going Carrier? Wait, he's getting you a gift? That's what he said. He said, Matt, I'm getting you a whistle pig Might Christmas gift. Okay. That's see. That's why I don't know Kevin. I don't know him. Can we start saying what we want for Christmas? Please yeah. go ahead. Fire away. <laughs> Drop it. I don't know what I want actually. Uh, what's the retail? Socks. What's uh, I'm gonna get through some of these questions. Retail price on Natty Babe? No, uh, it should be seventy nine ninety nine. I'm not one hundred percent sure, but our other ten picks have uh, been seventy nine ninety nine. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, Troy said, "Why do they call this ten if it's thirteen? Because um, they would have to resubmit." to the uh, TTB every single time they wanted to do a new label for a single barrel. It's just like Knob Creek um, when they put uh, nine-year or 10-year, whatever whatever the barrel picks are, uh, 120 proof. They're, uh, they, they are 120 proof, but they could be different years. Mm -hmm. um, they would have to resubmit to the government every single time they did a single barrel. So usually I differentiate on our custom-made labels, but I forgot to do that this time. So, uh, Jay? Uh, I heard Taylor's going to get you a bottle of Jefferson's Presidential 17. No. For, yes. For, uh, for Christmas this year. This is year. a great idea. So congrats on that. Uh, I'm not the, getting Jay anything for Christmas this yeah, year. Yeah, me either. I don't blame <laughs> you at all. All right. Uh, this is Bourbon Dictionary. We appreciate you for being here. Uh, we're going to do this uh, more frequently. But at, at uh, as we leave you today, let me remind you, if you are listening to this before or watching this, before December the 12th. Uh, December the 12th is the Calandro's Rare Whiskey Raffle. This is the 8th annual. Jay will be there, too. Jay will be show. there. Uh, Jay Decody show will be there. I'll be there. All the proceeds benefiting the Four Kids Foundation. You can sample whiskey. You can sample wine. Uh, the deli's open in the back. So yeah, people come get I, yeah food. I think. So and, I, and, and, and I'm actually trying to work on getting a couple food trucks there. So Yeah, um, that'd be great. And just just for clarification, the we're going to start selling tickets the day of the event. So we're, so when we open at seven a.m. at Perkins Road, um, and I think that's why why not earlier? Because you have to be present to win. So I don't want to start t selling tickets earlier because things come up for people and they can't make it, and it mm. just it, it, we, we 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 raised too over, bad for them. Yeah, we we raised over thirty thousand in one day last year, so I can't ask for much more. I mean, let's ask for more. Let's ask yeah, for no, we, forty thousand. We, we, I think we, I think the final number was thirty-seven last year. Oh. Before, before you came in, I told him, "All right, let's do big top ten in the parking lot, block party, band, food trucks galore, flow in and out of the store. Let's make spotlights. Let's make. I mean, let's yep. do it. Eventually, we'll we'll probably get to that point. And, and I was actually toying with uh, with getting Chuck to come play some music for us this year. Chuck, Chuck let's get a kiss uh, out there. And uh, Kirk, there you Kirk, go. Kirk, Kirk. <laughs> Chuck's going to be know. producing the Jay Dakota show on I site know, from four to that's, six, that's but Pyro, afterwards. Pyrotechnics galore. Right. Yes, Chuck, Chuck is a man show. of many hats. This is uh, Bourbon Dictionary. Taylor, Jay, I'm Matt, Paul O'Neill producing on the video side. We appreciate y'all. Happy whiskey drinking, folks. Thank y'all.